So no doubt, Fiverr and Upwork are the most popular freelancing sites there is. So in this video, I'm going to try to compare these two different websites, Fiverr and Upwork. And I'm going to try to help you figure out which is best for you as you're trying to embark in your freelancing journey. Seeing that these websites, these platforms are quite different, it is advised that you focus on one of them. Irrespective of which one you're in, you want to focus on them, do the work, and you will get results. So which is it going to be, Fiverr or Upwork? Our first comparison is which one is more popular. So Fiverr has stayed longer technically. And so sometimes people say Fiverr is more popular because they stayed longer. And people usually trust older companies because they've stood the test of time. So people may tend to trust Fiverr best. Why is popularity really a factor in this case? So in 2022, right, Upwork was reported to have 793k active buyers while fiverr had 4.3 million active buyers do you know what this means it means that 793k people actively bought spent their money spent their dollars on upwork meanwhile 4.3 million active people spent their money on fiverr they spent this money on, on sellers they spent this money on freelancers right so it means that people are actually going onto this platform. But by number, you'll see that a larger amount of people were on Fiverr as opposed to Upwork. But I want you to get something that's even more fascinating. So I tried to figure out, I tried to research, and I was thinking about, it's not just about people who bought. How about the people who sold, sold right? The sellers on there, the freelancers on there. How many freelancers are there? Guess what? I got a number. I wasn't able to get the number of freelancers, current number of freelancers um, in 2022 in Upwork. I saw speculations. And what I saw was that there were about 5 million freelancers there. I don't know whether they meant users or so. So I'm not just going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about what I saw. So remember I said Fiverr had 4.3 million active buyers. Guess how many active sellers they had. Just guess. Mm -mm, they didn't get it right. They had 380,000 <laughs> active sellers so you mean to tell me that 4.3 million buyers spent money on 380k people they are not even up to 500k so what is this telling you this is telling you that buyers are willing to spend in fiverr so personally i've always been a fiverr fan i am on fiverr and i feel like fiverr well fiverr won the popularity contest so we're going to we're going to move on and by the end of the video i'm going to tell you which i feel because it all depends on your type of job right the type of skill you're willing to sell so by the end of the video I'm going to talk to you about that. So secondly is pricing. I feel like I need my glasses. So secondly is pricing. So for freelancers, for sellers, Fiverr charges 20% per transaction. Meanwhile, Upwork charges 10% per, tra per transaction. So given that Fiverr seems to be more expensive, one would say Upwork is actually cheap. And remember, people usually see Upwork as those places you go to spend more money, right? Because they feel like Fiverr is actually, um, you pay less on Fiverr generally than on um, Upwork because you get more complex type of jobs on Upwork. And so if, I mean, if you're getting more money on Upwork and Upwork is just charging you 10%, Upwork is definitely where you want to be, right? Instead of Fiverr, which is charging you 20%. So when it comes to pricing, yeah, Upwork won. So the next, the third comparison is how to get started. So as a freelancer, which of these platforms has a low barrier of entry? So for Fiverr, once you get onto Fiverr, you're getting onto, say, a buyer profile. You're just a buyer. You're just browsing Fiverr. You're not really a seller. Before you're able to sell, you should be able to become a seller. And becoming a seller would take you directly to create a gig. So that's the first step. Your first step into becoming a seller is that you should have at least one gig. Meanwhile, um, pro, um, Upwork just lets you create a profile, right? So it depends, right? So what it means is that before you were able to become a seller on Fiverr, you should have decided on what you want. You would have had that hard thought of what do I want to do? What do I want to do? How am I going to go about it? What am I going to sell? What am I going to sell? You would have had that, you know, tough decisions to make. Meanwhile, when you you know, on Upwork, you might just create a profile first and try to figure it out on, you know, what, how, try to figure out how the platform works. But you would have already created that seller profile on Upwork. So when it comes to Upwork and Fiverr, hmm, I would say Upwork makes it easy to get started because you just really need to create the account. Meanwhile, 
<clears throat> Fiverr will not really make it so easy for you to get started because you should have figured out exactly what you wanted to do. At least figure out your first gig or first, you know, gig. Yeah. So when it comes to the challenge of getting a job, yeah, I, I know this is where people are very, very skeptical about because everybody wants to run to that platform. Everybody wants to go to that platform where there are jobs. I mean, I just said that 4.3 million people paid for jobs, actively bought stuff in 2022 on Fiverr. Right. So it means that people feel like there are jobs there. Right. But then are there really jobs there? Are they really accessible to new people? Are they just, let, you know, are they just there and nobody's able to get them or people are not able to get them? So when it comes to getting a good job, Fiverr has, um, people say that Fiverr has the upper hand here. And let me um, illustrate for you. So right there on Fiverr, because you've created your gig, once you're now a seller, you have a profile almost like LinkedIn, where you put in your description, kind of like a bio, a summary of who you are, your skills, your certification, if you have licenses, and if you went to any higher institution, you can put it up there. So you kind of have a profile, right? So when people stumble upon your gig and look at your gig and feel like they want a little bit more information about you, they have the option of going to your profile and seeing what you have up there, even putting up your profile pictures. On the other hand, um, so this means that when a buyer wants to buy someone who is going to design a wristwatch for him, he is probably going to look for designers, wristwatch designers, product designers, and he's going to go through, the, he's probably going to type it in the search bar or go through the categories. And he's going to be presented with a whole lot of people. At this point, he has the option of searching. Maybe he doesn't have a lot of budget to go with the very expensive people. So he can decide to look for a designer who is new, a new seller, because they have different categories. He might decide that, okay, how about I want someone who stays in the U.S. or I want someone who is in Africa, who has that Afri artistic, African artistic mindset, right? And so for that product he wants to design, he would, you know, he has the option of going around and seeing people who he might be interested in working with. Meanwhile, on Upwork, getting a job would require the buyer to put it out there. Hey guys, this is what, this is my description. I want someone who is going to um, design a watch that has an, you know, African vibe to it. I need, um, I need it in 24 hours or I need it in 30 days, blah, 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 blah. And this is my budget. Guess what's going to happen when he puts this out? A whole lot of people who feel like they can do it, including people who are in Africa, people who are not in Africa, are going to go through this bidding war. So they're going to all submit their proposals, cover letter. And when he has all these letters, all these people submitting, you know, indicating that they want to work with him, he's overwhelmed by all of this. Or rather, he feels like, okay, who is able to convince me the most? Who will I book an interview with? And who, who is going to understand me? you know more so you see the approach on fiverr sellers are likely going to be found easier than on upwork right because it's more like one buyer puts out and then people who are interested would submit and show interest and that one buyer will sort through this 20 to 50 people who put interest and choose one or two or say choose 10 that he wants to interview and at the end of the day choose one or two he wants to work with meanwhile on fiverr you have your profile set up you're a designer you have done your keyword research so that you can be easily found and people who are interested in getting someone design a wristwatch for them can browse through you and browse through another person and another person who is also interested in that or thinking of that can also browse through you and brush to another person. And another, so I feel like Fiverr wins because Fiverr has the opportunity to showcase different types of sellers, new sellers, in, um, level one sellers, top rated sellers, and all of that. So I, I took quite a time to explain that. So Fiverr versus Upwork, which is best for, right? So beginners and experts, we're going to just have two categories now. Fiverr is best for beginners and because i feel like personally i feel like you can watch youtube videos and you can get the hang of how fiverr works personally i've tried to work on upwork it hasn't worked out for me maybe i'm being a little bit biased because fiverr worked out better but i feel like upwork requires a little bit of extra help you need guidance you need someone holding your hand to tell you this is how it works that's what i feel you need some sort of master class you need some sort of program you want to enroll in just to be able to understand how upwork works 
right? So personally, I would say that Fiverr is best for beginners. Upwork is best for people who have a little bit of extra help and experts. So some people move on from working on Fiverr for a while, gathering experience, and then going on to Upwork because they feel like they can take on more complicated tasks because um, it's assumed that Upwork comes with more complicated, large-scale projects. My recommendations. Well, at the end of the day, the decision of which platform to use would depend on your skills. It would depend on the type of projects you want to work on. Because Fiverr seems to have more short-term projects, right? When I mean short-term, I mean maximum of, say, three months to six months projects. Meanwhile, I know I have had the mutual friend who is very successful on Upwork, and she's been working with the people for over a year now, a particular client. for That was then, that was over two years by now, right? So it depends on the type of projects that you want to work on. You know one other reason why I like Fiverr? Fiverr has analytics so remember when i gave the analogy of how people come on to your profile and they decide on whether they want to work with you or not by either going to your gig going to your profile to get to know you more fiverr gives you statistics fiverr gives you that analytics of who is who you know impressions clicks and all that and personally i use it i i monitor my clicks i monitor my impression because i feel like if i have 1k impressions on a new gig say i started a new gig about um creating content for people for their products right on fiverr and i started this new gig and i noticed that in about 30 days i've had 1000 impressions and out of the 1000 impressions i had say 35 clicks and nobody when i mean clicks it means people clicked on it but they didn't message me right so what went wrong why would 1000 people see my gig only 33 people decided to click on it and out of the 33 people that decided to click on it none of them messaged me it means something is wrong is it that I'm not presenting my service well or I'm not serving well. My package is not good, right? So I need to go back and think that I need to add to what I have to make it more enticing or I need to go back and repackage my presentation. So it helps me a lot, especially when I'm trying to launch gig or when things are no longer, it seems as if I'm no longer getting orders on a particular gig. I think about going back and reiterating and, you know, Figuring out what's going on. I know competition comes up every day. Like people are starting up, people are copying you. But how do I still make my gig relevant? So I like that Fiverr keeps the analytics. I feel like it's a gold mine. And with the Seller Plus, which is a paid service, you know, you can get a, a lot more on your analytics. But right now, I'm doing the free one. So in conclusion, if you're looking to get a large variety of jobs, like you're new in this whole freelancing thing, you're not sure where you want to go to what you want to do you're not vibe. like you're just new in this whole career financing thing right i'm going to tell you if you're new fiverr is the best bet because you're, you're still trying to figure out what you want to do right are you really going to be a virtual assistant for the rest of your life it's good if you want to but you need to figure that thing out right you need to test the waters you need to try it and realize that okay yes i want to do this for the rest of my life how do i upgrade or you want to do it and realize that uh, yeah, I don't think I want to do this for the rest of my life. How do I switch? How do I transition into something else, right? So I think Fiverr is a platform that allows you to test all, all these thoughts that, you know, run through your head. Because most people that are coming to Fiverr might not really be looking for experts. So because Fiverr categorizes freelancers, it's easy for buyers to realize that, okay, they are working with a newbie. Probably don't have a budget for an expert. I can, I want to work with a newbie. Right. And so when they are working with you, they are able to tolerate your mistakes and maybe guide you through on how you're going to serve them better. Right. But I feel like on Upwork, it's a little bit more rigid, a little bit more straightforward that when someone is choosing you, they are probably choosing the best out of all the proposals they saw. Even if they decide not to choose the best, I feel like Fiverr gives more flexibility. If you're looking for um, a platform that allows you to start, to start little, test the waters then Fiverr is the place you want to go to. If you already know what you want to do, you know you want to be a designer, you know you want to design products, you know you want to be a project manager, you want to work on projects, you know you want to be a virtual assistant, you only want to assist people virtually, no other thing, then I think Upwork is that place you want to do, you know, want to be because you must have had that portfolio, you must have had experience, everything ready to support your cover letter and, you know, all of that. So if you feel like you enjoyed this podcast, if you feel like you enjoyed this video, the content, 
let me know what you think. What do you think about Fiverr? What do you think about Upwork? I'm really, really eager to know what you think about it. So thank you guys. See you in the next video. Bye.